after a 10 year gap, we're finally getting paid a three September 21st this year, and we get to live out all of our heisting fantasies. I have here Almir Listo, Global Brand Director and Head of Community, and Andres Hell Penninger, lead producer from Starbreeze, to answer all of our questions about payday three. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I want to dive into this. So why did you decide to launch the Unreal 5 after launch of the game? Mm, I can take that. So when we started uh, the development of Payday 3, we, uh, we just had Unreal 4. Unreal 5 wasn't available. And uh, as Unreal 5 became available, we did look into it and evaluated it. But we just saw that moving and transitioning during development, it would uh, put some risk to the core experience of the project and the most important thing for us right now is to make sure that the game is fun and it plays well so the transition post launch just makes sense for us from a from a development point of view okay oh and i think this is new footage of the new heist that yeah. is available yeah. later yes can you tell us a little bit more about this particular one because i think i only got to play the bank and mm. the art museum yeah so like you said in the beta we had a bank which is um it's sort of like a vanilla payday level, right? It has a very classic bank robbery feel to it. It's very close to the core fantasy. This one is a little bit different. Uh, most noticeable, it has a very different setting, right? Um, it's also a little bit more stealth oriented. And it has a very interesting feature where when you steal the loot that you're after, it degrades over time. So you need to be very quick and very coordinated with your team to get it back to its uh, uh, container uh, before it, it loses its value. Oh, okay, interesting. That and it also, it also features a new contractor. Yeah. So for this heist, we're working together with Ice-T, who portrays the character of Mac. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, we didn't know this before, but Ice-T's been a fan of Payday since seven, eight years past. Yeah, Payday 2. So when we reached out to him, he was super excited to work with us. So he's a new contractor. This is his heist in New Jersey, because he's from New Jersey. So we had to do that for him. That's amazing. Yeah. OK, so I'll just have to wait six years to get my yeah. contractor position that in this. That is correct. So we'll talk <laughs> after. Payday 4. Oh, yeah. OK, great. Yes, Payday 4. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> So I also want to ask, what was the biggest challenge in developing Payday 3 on the new engine as well? So you did talk about the different technical challenges it presented. Um, I think, so Payday 1 and Payday 2 was developed in our in-house engine, Diesel, and Payday 3 is now in Unreal 4. And uh, one of the, the biggest challenges that we faced very early on was making sure that we still capture that Payday feel, like the moment to moment, because mm -hmm. it has a very particular feel, right? So we worked on that for a very long time and you know, made sure that we had a prototype that felt like Payday before we started fleshing out a lot more features. Okay. I also think something cool that we could prepare for properly for Payday 3 was that when we made Payday 2, we didn't know we were going to be working on it for 10 years. Mm. But making Payday 3, we built the proper foundation so that we know that we can continuously update it over time. And with our partner Deep Silver, we can look forward you know, to at least 18 months of post-launch content. Yeah. Yeah, that's great because a lot of people still do play Payday 2 to this day. So mm. I think that'll be great that it'll be updated constantly as well with yeah. the new support. So I did want to ask because we see a lot of games coming out at the $70 price point. What was the reasoning for the $39.99 release price? I only have 40 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. No, but I think it's a fair price point for a fair amount of content, right? Payday the Heist, the first game had six heists on launch, Payday 2 had 12, and Payday 3 has eight on launch, right? But over time, we're going to add more content, both free and paid, whether it's, you know, characters, heists, weapons, gadgets, new outfits. Yeah, so uh, over time, you know, uh, there'll be more to enjoy. But I think 40 is a great price point because if it would be a $70 title, maybe that would be, you know, two more years of development or whatever, you know. Yeah. But we feel this is a good price point for the amount of content you get. Yeah. Yeah, I like that answer about only having $40 because I'm like, you know what, it's getting expensive. This is an expensive yeah, well, hobby. Yeah, it's an expensive <laughs> yeah, yeah, hobby, yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> yeah, so I do want to talk, so I, since I did get some hands-on time with the preview, mm. we have some mechanics that we weren't able to do before, like putting the mask on and being able to climb things to help with the stealth gameplay. So what were the biggest changes in Payday 3's mechanics from Payday 2? Mm. What we did early on was really try to identify how can we get closer to what the heist fantasy is all about? Mm. So not necessarily looking at mechanics that are like, yes, this would be fun. That's obviously a very important part of it. But starting with how do we like enhance that? Um, so I think at least for me and, and m many of the people in the studio, um, 
all the new mechanics around hostage management. You know, now you can grab civilians and guards as human shields. You can trade them with the police and negotiate with them. You can trade them between in assaults to get resources back. So there's a lot of things to play with there that really feeds into like, you know, what bank robbery is all about. For me, it was a lot about retaining the integrity of, of the game, like the world of Payday. I think with Payday 2, we went, over time, we went like all over the place, you know, trying different things, you know, and so on. And for Payday 3, we wanted, even though the game is an evolution of the series, we still want to pull back the fantasy and make it more mature again, you know, mm -hmm. a bit more dark and gritty. So I think that's reflected, you know, in the behavior of the world, how it looks, the atmosphere of it all, how New York feels and so on. Yeah. But also our characters, you know, that they look five years older. Because a matter of fact, it's, it's been five years since they retired in Payday 2. And that's also an important part of making a sequel, that it's the same world, it's the same storyline. We haven't, like, gone and changed everything, right? It is, the, it's, it is your OG for coming back into a world of crime for whatever reason that is going to unfold in Payday 3. Yeah, can you actually go into a little bit of the story? Why did they come out of retirement and what have they been up to? I think we don't want to spoil too much. Okay. But I can, what I can say is that what happened after the White House heist in Payday 2, when they stole their pardons, their presidential pardons, mm. the gang retired and there were more than 20 people in the Payday gang at the time. They re retired and went their different ways. And for whatever reason that we'll find out in Payday 3, they were forced back into a life of crime. And in Mac, the new contractor that is portrayed by IST, including others, are bringing them to New York to uh, help them along. It's also a greedy crew, you know? They live for this, yeah. yeah. Well, like we said, video games are expensive, so I don't blame them, really. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is why they're back. <laughs> right? Yeah, just for video games. Yeah. So you did mention earlier that there are going to be some expansions, some free, some not. So how many DLC do you have planned for this game so far? Uh, we're looking at year one initially, right? Because that's uh, what we have coming up. But of course, like we're fantasizing about what's to come. And there is so much input. Like I want to really want to give a shout out to the community because yeah. they've been with us through these past 10 years, you know, always having great feedback on what to do, what not to do. And uh, they'll definitely influence us, uh, I think, as soon as they get to try their hands on the launch content. And as soon as they start feedbacking us, we'll be taking that in and adjusting course probably slightly. Yeah, yeah we want to work with them closely. And then also, um, even though we haven't said exactly what we're going to do for year one, um, what I can say is that it's important to us that it, it's not just a content treadmill knitter. Like, not only characters and weapons and, uh, you know, cosmetics. Um, we want to ensure that we grow the product and uh, we take the experience where we want it to be mm. and we work together with the community on you know finding out that what what's that going to be uh, long term yeah. it, it's funny with payday 2 as well i remember when we were making collabs initially because we made over 30 different collaborations for payday 2 over 10 years mm. right the fans were like ah oh, why did you do this why did you add this oh no and now with payday 3 they're like when am I gonna get my favorite collab back? You know, so it, like the tide has changed somewhat, but we still, you know, want to retain the integrity, focus on the core gang initially, and then over time we'll try to see, you know, what collab should we do, what shouldn't we do? Yeah. Yeah, and I think retaining the integrity has a lot to do with collaborating with your community. I mean, we have people that have, you know, thousands of hours in the game, and uh, PD2 has almost been. Almir and I have been at Starbreeze for almost 12 years now and, and working on PD2 for a long time. And PD2 for us has almost been like a test bed. You know, we've been trying and experimenting a lot with, with different things. Some stuff that works, some that, that doesn't really. Yeah. So I think we've learned a lot from that and really learned that, you know, working together with our fans on making sure where um, where their expectations probably potentially aren't met, you know. Yeah. Especially being like really clear on when we screwed up, you know, because we have, you know, over 200 updates over 10 years, you're bound to screw up at some point, mm. right? And I think being very honest and open about that and telling the community like, we're sorry, you know, we should have done this, we should have done that instead. And just listening to them and having that very uh, truthful and straight relationship with them. I think that's done a lot over the years, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we waited 10 years for Payday 3, so I think they'll wait a little bit more for any new updates, and they'll be happy to get their hands on this this year. So thank you so much for speaking with me today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we are so pumped to play Payday 3 when it comes out. I can't wait to jump back in and try all eight heists. Payday 3 launches September 21st, so be sure to stay right here at IGN for all of your Payday updates.